I'm Lisa Leong, the host of This Working Life. I love exploring ways to bring more humanity into work. And today, I'm getting some tips on winding down. Well, what do you do to wind down from work? I've picked up something. <laughs> I do Sudoku, uh, hashtag COVID hobby. <laughs> I find that it's a really good way to wind down from work. Um, but once again, not sure if there's other things to do. So I do a bit of Sudoku and then um, I have this really nice hot bath with Epsom salts and then uh, I'm pretty much in a relaxed state. But we're gonna find out from other people what they do to wind down from work. We went overseas on a big family holiday in 2011 and we downloaded all of the Harry Potter books as talking books. Um, with the idea that if we were in the van or we were on the plane or whatever and the kids were going spare, we could listen to Harry Potter. Now, the only one who got into it and got off on it was me. <laughs> and I found it really meditative and uh -oh. put me to sleep, basically. Um, and then if I was ever waking up, and I'm one of those people who would wake up and lie awake for three hours thinking about the world and the problems and... Ah, and a good way to wind down. So it just definitely became ritualistic for me. It, it, it puts me to sleep. It calms me down. It stops me overthinking things. And it's just become my nighttime companion. It's very, yeah. very meditative. It means it's basically just white noise. And then on the wind down from work point, I'm... Um, you know, this is a struggle point for many, especially working from home, isn't it? Because it kind of just leeches into uh, every piece of the house. In your experience, what, are, what do you sort of say for people trying to look for a, some sort of way of switching off? Yeah, so it's really important to have that hard stop. So, you know, have the oven timer set, you have your hard stop, turn the computer off or put it away or close the laptop um, and then have a ritual or a routine that is your closing down routine. Um, you know, for mine, uh, I'll turn everything off and then I'll stretch because you've been in front of the computer, even off and on all day. Same time every night? Yeah, yep. So that ritual for me is built around the fact that I pick my daughter up from the school train <laughs> at 4pm. Um, yeah. So at 3.45pm, it's a hard close for me. Yeah. And I'll do stretching and then I'll go and do my puzzle for 10, 15 minutes. Um, you know, it's a hard close and I'll turn the music on really loud. And it just means that I'm really switching it up. Um, yeah. On the days where I've had enough by say 11 a.m. or 12 <laughs> o'clock, yeah. same ritual. It's just a couple of hours earlier, but I do the same thing. Turn everything down or turn everything off turn the oven off <laughs> and the music up and get on the puzzle. And then for the rest of the day, it's mine. I thought, well, what's, it, what's one thing I have more time and be more constructive and more productive. I said, well, I just drinking alcohol doesn't seem to be conducive to that because I'm sleeping a lot more. And if you just add another hour of you know, time that you're awake, you can probably do, you know, 20 minutes more of whatever you're trying to achieve. And so I, I, I stopped and it's been 681 days now. It actually opened up a whole other door for myself of personal discovery, um, alignment, authenticity, um, questioning what I do like to do and what I don't like to do. And, and the, actually one of the hardest questions which I um, experienced from that is, how do you have fun? What did you come up with? Actually, there were a couple of months there that was actually kind of, I don't know what I'm going to do for fun. You know, what do I do? Do I? And so I'd fill the time with, you know, purposeful things that not maybe not necessarily were as fun. And then I got to a mo point where I was like, oh, I don't really find this fun. I remembered, you know, I love to play computer games. Um, I find that fun. Um, I like to play board games. I find that. I find it fun to, to create another world and compete. Um, I enjoy that. What are you saying to yourself in that moment? How are you motivating yourself to stay true to that experiment? I say to myself, is this conducive to the goal ultimately that I want to achieve? And it's a pretty binary answer. It's no, that doesn't, I have, I'm putting my goal and my, what I'm trying to achieve in my um, life above that.
in, so I'm not willing to compromise that. I am not negotiably committed to success. On the days that I have my son, we have a deal where at 5.30, it's all tech off. So for him and for me, so it's not really fair <laughs> if it's one or the other. We've become connected to two things. One is drawing together. So I signed up for a, a very cheap drawing class on Udemy when COVID hit and I'm a crap drawer, but I was like, I've always wanted to draw and I'm going to learn how to do this properly. So we draw together. We do drawing class um, we, and we play a game. We'll, we'll pick a game or we have a campfire. So I went at the start of COVID and bought a campfire. So we'll either sit in the backyard and we'll play cards around the campfire or I've got this table tennis set that actually attaches to my beautiful dining table. We'll, have, we'll play table tennis or I'm, this might be completely inappropriate. I've taught him how to play blackjack and we've got chips. So we actually play with chips. And then we have dinner together. We always sit at the table and have dinner together. Um, and that dinner, the one thing that I love that we always do is um, it's like a little gratitude exercise called Rosebud Thorn. Have you heard of this? No, talk me through it. The rose is basically something beautiful that happened in your day. So it's like a gratitude. Um, the bud is something you're looking forward to. And the thorn is something that was perhaps a little bit shitty. So it's about saying, you know, it's good to celebrate the good, but also we should connect and process things that perhaps didn't go the way we wanted. And I love that because it's all connected. If you've got a rose, you've got a thorn and a bud yeah. is new. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm going to yeah. use that. Like I have my own rituals for me that are just for me, but the rituals that I've now got with my son, it's really beautiful, the connection that it's created. And he's like, so sometimes when I go, oh, it's time for Rosebud Thorn, he goes, oh. But we always end up laughing at the end of it, you know. Well, I hope there was something in that for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the ABC Australia YouTube channel below and follow the podcast link for even more This Working Life. Till we meet again, keep working.